Members, the House has resumed. At the break, we were debating the Prime Minister's statement, and Michael Woodhouse had the floor. And Michael has just Michael Woodhouse has just over nine minutes remaining. Should he wish to take the yeah, call, time, Mr. Speaker? I call Michael Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I know you've been waiting with bated breath through the recess to hear. Uh, what it was that happened to me a couple of weeks ago, but it was the distinct feeling that I had transferred into some parallel universe at Labor's announcements of tax cuts that they would borrow heavily to fund. That's right, a tax-free zone of $5,000 for every single New Zealander, including the very rich, the spouses of the very rich who work part-time, and the middle-income earners they claim to want to help and they're going to have to plunge New Zealand more deeply into debt to fund it. It's going to cost somewhere in the region of $1.55 billion to fund that and the dropping of GST on fruit and veg. And Mr Goff said in his speech, quote, I won't make any promises that I can't keep or that the country can't afford. And then he mumbles something about loopholes and taxing the rich. Mm, tax the rich. He said they'll deal with a loophole in respect of the ability to offset unrelated income from salary through um, LAQCs, I presume, from rental property losses. Well, I've got news for the Labor Party. That loophole was closed in Budget 2010. The tax losses that were generated are largely from non-cash offsets through depreciation. What happened to depreciation? It's disappeared, so nearly no help there. And the other so-called tax loophole that close will be in respect of high income taxpayers who are not, according to the Labor Party, paying their way. So we're going to go back to Labor taxing the rich. But they can't have read the Tax Working Group report very closely, because that said that the problem with the tax system was that it was distorted and misaligned. A top rate of 39% when the trust rate of 33% created arbitrage. So national fixes the loophole. And Labor want to bring the loophole back and envy tax. But this time they say they're not going to tax the rich, they're going to tax the really rich. Who the really rich are and what, ta what rate of tax they're going to charge them, heaven only knows. But it would have to be around 60 cents in the dollar or more. And last time their envy taxes hit the uber rich like teachers and police and doctors and nurses. And the really rich? They went to their tax accountants. But the doctors and the nurses, they went to the travel agents and they booked their tickets to Australia. And it would happen again if Labor got the chance. So at this rate, the $1.5 billion tax cuts would be funded out of pie-in-the-sky loophole closures that don't bear up to close scrutiny and raise very little offset revenue to fund it. So no cuts in spending. And there's only one other way to fund those cuts, Mr Speaker, and that is to borrow. A Labor Party promising to borrow to pay for tax cuts. So they will have a choice at the end of this year, Mr Speaker. More envy taxes, more spending on bureaucracy, more debt to be repaid by future generations, or fiscal discipline, less bureaucracy, a plan for growth and a determination to reduce debt, not grow it. And I paraphrase from a recent speech where one leader said this, I quote, we need to freeze annual domestic spending for the next five years. This would reduce the deficit. The freeze will require painful cuts. Already we have frozen the salaries of hard-working government employees for the next two years. I've proposed cuts to things I care deeply about, like community action programs. Now, who was this? Some extreme right-wing leader hell-bent on destroying po uh, social policy? No. Barack Obama in his State of the Union address. So would Mr Obama get it? If countries with similar debt pro profiles like Ireland and Greece and Spain and Portugal, left-wing administrations proposing austerity measures far beyond anything this government is proposing, what's up that the Labour Party completely failed to grasp it? The spending frenzy went on for the last three years of their administration, and if they um, get back, God forbid, to the Treasury benches, they propose to continue it, and it simply cannot. Whatever the policy question is, the answer cannot be burden this country with more debt. 
when we're talking about how to improve the quality and volume of our health services, the answer can't be more debt. It's a lazy approach, a tax and spend approach that is past populist policy. We need to think smarter about it. And that means looking at quality control. It means looking at systems and processes, new technologies, avoiding waste and error. And I know that's possible in our health services. They're actually doing it. The results of the last couple of years of really excellent progress in elective surgery discharges, in reductions in waiting times for emergency treatment and cancer treatment is evidence of that. But there's plenty of scope for more. It needs to be done because the question has, cannot be answered with burden this country with more debt. And our ECE funding changes is a very sensible example of not doing that. But Ms Maroney, Labor and their union mates are running around like chicken littles saying that the sky is going to fall in because of a small change to the staffing model that the government is pre prepared to fund in this straightened times. While at the same time ignoring those very positive contributions for our Maori and Pacifica kids, and Mr Davis knows exactly what I'm talking about, some of whom around the country have no more than about 60% access to ECE. So he will sit by while his party promises to send about 1,000 ECEs to the wall in, uh, for the sake of an ideology, an ideology that says um, an experienced parent or grandparent or an experienced teacher aide or caregiver cannot possibly look after a child under the age of five. It absolutely beggars belief, Mr Speaker. They insult those parents and those grandparents. It's stupid and it's ideological. But nowhere more does this ideology get in the way of doing the right thing uh, than in the belief that the only way for a business to run is if government is the only one running it. That's right. And the best example of that, Mr Speaker, is ACC. And we've waited nearly two and a half years for Labor to apologise for the $7.2 billion hole they left in that scheme. But the public shouldn't hold its breath. Because I'm very proud of the ACC scheme, but it's not a sacred cow. It's not something that can be hermetically sealed for all time. Choice is a good thing. It will reduce costs and levy payers will have the choice to stay with ACC if they wish. Now, on Monday night, I attended a function in Hamilton where that city's economic development agency launched the various tech NZ R&D um, investment programs. It was a great night. Well, I happened to be, have been there in Cambridge, actually, that day. <clears throat> and we've invested more than $320 million in those programs a hell of a lot more effective than a lazy R&D tax credit program that benefits tax accountants more than it does the economy. And Mr Goff trumpeted the release of Labor's action plan for jobs and growth, and the only thing he could think of to announce was a return of the R&D tax credit, one lazy lever that they could think of. But there isn't just one lever to pull, Mr Speaker. Real meaningful growth comes from innovation funds, the 90-day probation period, which recently uh, was found to have had a very positive impact on small businesses. We kept Hobbit jobs in New Zealand. We committed billions of dollars to infrastructure development. We reduced the barriers to doing business by unwinding red tape. We built on the free trade agreements we've already uh, developed to drive the export-led recovery we need. And we'll campaign on competition and partial floats. There is a plan. It's a really good plan on many fronts, and I'll put, up, put that plan up against the tax, spend and borrow promises of the Labor opposition any day.